Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Ross the Oliver Man, and today we continue with part two of my equipment tour. Today we'll talk about the Super Series of tractors, and I have four, actually five if you count one that's in pieces, but I don't really consider that to be a tractor at this point. But I have these four, and we will go down here and start with the Super 55. The Super 55, I got probably, I don't know, four or five years ago. I lose track of time, so you'll just have to look back. Uh, I put most of my pictures on Facebook when I get stuff. But it was a total basket case, if ever there was one. And I can put some pictures into that. And it was owned by an old man who was probably 90 some years old. And he was getting ready to move into the nursing home. And so his son was trying to sell his tractor collection and he had a pretty good tractor collection. He probably had maybe 20 or so painted up tractors uh, inside his building that he took to shows, including a uh, Porsche tractor, which you hardly see around here. And I think they ended up keeping that. But anyway, he probably had another dozen or so that were in pieces or needed something. This one was in a shed by itself and if you can see in the pictures, it was just a sad sight. I mean, there was, he had taken the head off and saw that the motor was bad and then he kind of gave up on the project. And then silly me comes along and decides it's gonna resurrect this thing. So we drove up there and loaded it up and I think I gave $800 for it. I'm not exactly sure at this point, but I'm thinking it was something around there. and. Uh, that was probably almost too much for the shape it was in. It was in rough, rough shape. And uh, so I had to, of course, totally rebuild the motor. The motor was uh, locked up and I got that going again. It still has things that it needs. Uh, I was in a hurry to kind of get it going and use it because this is a handy size tractor. And at the time, all I had was my little Ford Jubilee and it gets used about every day. So I thought this would help kind of ease the burden of that. So I got it going and I think I even had to get two new front rims for it. I know I had to get back rims for it. The back rims were totally rotted off garbage. It needs tires. I reused the tires that were on it and they're on their last leg, but hey, we don't throw anything away when you're German. You just keep using it till it's not in existence anymore. So I guess when that leaves me stranded by the side of the road, I'll probably put new tires on it. But anyway, I've uh, been working on it here and there. Uh, I put new lights on it, of course. That's pretty well. I do that to everything. I talked about that in other videos. I put warning lights on them just because when you drive them on the road, anything helps. It got all new gauges, steering wheel. What it needs at this point is I need to take the top off the, off the transmission. The hydraulics are not the way they should be. It does lift, but it doesn't lift enough. So I've got a different pump and between that one and whatever we have here, I should be able to make something that works. So I've got all the stuff to do it. I just need the time to mess with it again. The tractor was fairly complete other than, like I said, I think front rims, it did not have the right ones. It had one off of a, like a two in or nine in forward, real tall, narrow, skinny thing. I had to uh, make the carburetor out of two carburetors. The one that was on it was junk. It had stuff twisted off down in it. And, and uh, it was kind of funny because I tried to get him to take less price and he said, no, because that carburetor's worth, you know, a couple hundred bucks by itself. And that would probably be true, but it turned out this one was garbage. So that's just the way that goes. Uh, this is a 1955 Super 55, if I didn't say that already, 1955 model year. And it seems like most of the Super tractors were a 1955 model year. Uh, I think really the only thing it was missing was strangely enough these braces that go under the platform on both sides and i found a set of those and put them on but otherwise it's just a handy little tractor uh if you've got one you know what i'm talking about i mean they're just very nice and uh 
useful. I don't know, it's kind of like having a four-wheeler, but I'd rather have an old tractor. This one is early enough, they changed some different things around over the years on them. This one still has a kick pedal starter. So what I mean is, you've got a linkage here and it goes over to the other side. And over here, you got this kick pedal that you kick with your foot once you turn the key on and that's what cranks it over. So that's kind of unusual. Later on, they went to key start and eliminated that, especially like on the 550. This is an earlier setup, kick pedal. Also, one thing that they changed in the Super 55 over the years was this flap that covers the uh, fuel tank and the radiator. From what I understand, the early ones were hinged the opposite way and people were burning their arms on the exhaust pipe when they're putting fuel in. So then they changed them over to this style, which hinges from the other way. And then finally, later on, the later tractors just used a hinge that went this way, like the uh, rest of the larger tractors. So, interesting things. And then by the time the 550 came along, they just put the fuel tank thing right through the hood and didn't worry about it anymore. But 1955 super 55 and it's a handy little tractor here we have my 1955 super 66 and this tractor was just probably two or three years ago it was bought just before the whole world shut down uh, like the year before that and i drug it out of the woods i saw it on facebook marketplace it showed up at like 8 o'clock in the morning, and at 8.01 I mes messaged them, and I said, uh, I got to have that tractor. And they said, okay, and said, can you be here this afternoon? And I said, I guess. Well, what it turned out to be is that the water was out flooding. And so what would have normally been like a 10-minute drive ended up to me to be a 45-minute drive to go all the way around to get this thing. And I asked them if they'd wait till the water went down, but they said, oh no, there's a whole line of people wanting it if you don't take it. So I had to drop what I was doing and go get it. And we went up there and I think if I understood right, they, I don't know, they were moving or the place got repossessed or something and they were just selling everything. And this tractor belonged to the guy, his brother who lived there, I don't know. But anyway, I'll put pictures into this one too. You can see it was a very rough, rough machine. But on the Facebook picture, when I saw that it had these flat plates on the frame, I knew I wanted it because it was either a Super 66 or a 660. And I thought either way, I can't lose. I can't remember, I think I gave $500 for it. And uh, of course it reflected that price, I mean, the motor was locked up. It was bad shape. Had to rebuild that. Uh, it was missing a bunch of the sheet metal you can see in the pictures. I had to find different sheet metal. They eventually did bring some sheet metal over to my cousins who lived not too far away and just dumped it off in their yard, but it was pretty well rotted beyond use. But uh, anyway, Super 66 and what's what else I guess is interesting about this tractor is it has mechanical lift on it still, which is kind of uh, unusual for the time. By then, a lot of people were pretty well going to hydraulics. And it also has belt pulley, which is another thing that was pretty well on its way out by the super time. It had belt pulley on it, but it did not have the pulley with it. And if you don't know anything about the Super 66, it takes a different pulley than the other tractors. It's smaller in diameter and it has an L casting number. It's 1L691 instead of 1K691 like the others. And I was lucky enough to find that at a neighbor who had some parts. I had a part uh, off of a Super 44 that he needed and he had this and I was finally able to acquire it from him so that I could complete this. The tractor is basically just an updated version of the 66. It's got disc brakes, uh, it has a tachometer, and it's got a key to turn your power on and then that uses the push button to start, like the earlier tractors. The tractor, of course, had junk tires, and uh, this rim was good enough that I could patch it. I just patched around the valve stem hole, and uh, it was good to go. 
it had a set of wheel weights on it, I believe, but they were mix matched, which turned out to be fine because I had a mix match set at home and it matched the other two. So now I had two sets that were mates again by buying this tractor. The other rim though, over here, this rim was just absolutely in terrible shape and I could not save it alone. And I, it's actually, it is made out of two rims I cut in half and welded together. And if you look close, you can kind of see it. I really, I guess, don't want to give away my secrets, but there is a seam right there. And then over here, it was really bad. It was a real trick to make one because there was not a lot to work with. And I didn't have another rim that was this narrow, so I used a 77 rim and just cut cut a half a pack it was a it was quite a job to do that but i could not find this width of tire so i had to go with that and it worked pretty good this tractor i think this was probably like the cheapest set of tires i ever bought for whatever reason and i think it's because they use them on pivot irrigators these are alliance tires and I think they were like 200 bucks a piece at the time, and that was about as cheap as it gets. So that's a pretty good deal there. Of course, again, all new lights and new steering wheel and all that. You can see from the picture, the tractor was just ready for the junkyard and probably past due for that. I do remember that uh, the guy who actually owned it showed up whenever I was winching it on the trailer because that was an ordeal in itself. The wheels were set out wide, so I had to slide one wheel all the way in so that I could get it on the trailer. And I was just working my behind off, and the uh, guy who was there was laughing the whole time. He said, I can't believe it. You're going to save this piece of crap, you know? And then when his brother showed up, he said, get a load of this. This guy's going to try to save this thing. So I took it to the county fair this year. I hope that those people saw it and saw that it actually did come back to life because... I told him I would and here it is. I had to totally rebuild the seat, of course. It was in very bad shape. So it's got a bushing kit in it and all new rubbers. Uh, I don't know that it, I, it might have had a toolbox on but not a lid and I had another lid. That's an original lid, not a reproduction. Uh, other than that, this is where it sits, it's not not totally restored yet. I really need to do a lot more body work to it. I just wanted some color on it so I could take it out and play with it. And I'll probably end up repainting it at some point, especially the hood. The hood was caved in pretty far and the gas tank actually still has a dent in it, but it looked like they hit it against a tree and just put a big divot in it. So the hood's pretty rough. I had to really really work on it to get it this good and it's still not perfect but like I said it's a work in progress but it completes my set here of what I have so far so and I saved it and brought it back from the dead so that's always fun over here we have my 1955 super 77 diesel I had always wanted an old diesel tractor and I got this one from another neighbor who collects he had got it from a guy who was a tractor puller and when I found that out, I should have walked away because it has turned out to not be as good a deal as I thought it was. I got it, it did run when I got it. I drove it home and I gave it a good paint job and I thought I had something. And then the longer it went on, it just got harder and harder to start and the motor is just totally sacked out. It's, it's ready for a rebuild and I'm tempted to do an in-frame overhaul of it just so I can play with it, but I don't know. You know, I, I'm not in the habit of taking something apart that does kind of run and move under its own power until I get some of the ones that don't fixed, but this is one that I've already done the paint work. I really should get more out of it and go ahead and fix the motor. And I might do that here in the near future. It was, of course, stripped down for pulling. It did not have a belt pulley unit on it, and I wanted one on it, just, I don't know why, because I thought it made it look more complete. So I got the belt pulley unit off of another tractor that I actually ended up buying later. The uh, parts tractor I was talking about earlier is a Super 88. Got the belt pulley unit off that. Put that back on, 
it it had a flat plate uh, homemade over top of the transmission because they'd removed the hydraulic unit I wanted hydraulics back on it so I found that unit rebuild the pump put it on there got it complete uh, put wheel weights on it again it didn't have them on when I got it these are the rims and tires and wheel centers off of the 88 that I talked about in the other video I bought these tires brand new and you can see with the size they are they just look too skinny and look kind of goofy on that on the uh, 88 so I swapped around put them on here so I could get some good out of them and I like the way the tractor looks I really I enjoy it I enjoy driving it I enjoy the sound of the old diesels I just need to get it back where it's in better shape that you can hop on it and go and uh, like I said hopefully that'll happen soon again all new lights all the way around warning lights which I don't have wired up I don't think I have any of the lights right now wired up on this I got the new wiring ran to the fender but I haven't had time to uh, do that one of these rainy days I'll mess around in the shed and wire them the rest of the way up this seat needed a rebuilt as well and I did that several summers ago before I uh, took it someplace I don't remember if I took it to the fair or what I did with this but uh, I worked on it and rebuilt that so it will hold me up now because before I had a piece of wood wedged under there to hold myself up uh, of course again it's got new steering wheel gauges all that it's got uh, and I should have talked about that earlier in one of the videos but everybody sees this and they always wonder what it is they think oh it's a grease gun holder or whatever nope it's a hydraulic cylinder holder for when you had hydraulic cylinders used to they were so expensive that guys would take them off of the implement and move them back and forth and so when you weren't using it you could clamp it in here and it would hold the cylinder in here and then you always had it with you if you needed it so I've got these on several tractors and I'd like to get a cylinder fixed up and ready to go and put in each one but I don't know if I'll get that accomplished I've got a whole pile of cylinders but We'll see if I get to that point. These early diesels are interesting for the fact that you start them by kicking this rod. And people always wonder about that. You know, they don't understand how they work. But when you shove in on this rod, it not only pushes a button to turn the starter, but it actually, through the linkage, kicks the Bendix out into the flywheel so it cranks over and then it starts. And then when you want to shut it off, there's a knob you pull on the dash and it's got this little chain and it just pulls back on the injection pump arm and shuts her down so as i talked about in that video where i was working on it you can see how it slobbers really bad especially when it's cold so it definitely is time to give it some attention but it's an old diesel and it runs and again it kind of completes my lineup of the supers i have so far i just need the the far ends a super 44 and a super 99 but that will be a a ways off probably and finally in the super series we have my super 88 and also a 1955 model i bought this on christmas eve on auction time a couple years ago i remember sitting on the couch it was time to go to church and i was waiting for the auction to end and you know i pushed it till the last minute and still got there on time but it was important to get the last bid in I saw it and they had bought out this equipment jockey had bought out a, a guy I guess his estate the guy had died and there were several Oliver tractors and it was obvious that this guy took care of everything uh, everything had new rubber all the way around uh, you could just tell that they had been taken care of and really the new rubber is what sold it for me like I said I had a uh, another super 88 in pieces and i was going to try to put one together so that i had one to complete my line here but when i saw this and as cheap as it went i thought i can't even really hardly put the tires on you know the other one and this one runs and drives and i can play with it right away so i went ahead and bought it and i think it's been a pretty good purchase you've seen me use it in other videos i can link some of those up here you know I've used it this last year on the little woods mower and works great on that 
it's another one that has a belt pulley which is kind of odd at the super era you would think they were about over that by then but it does have the belt pulley and uh, has the hydraulics on it that was the way it came this tractor is pretty well exactly like it came other than I put new headlights on it it had some aftermarket type headlights I put those on and I put a set of wheel weights on it and otherwise it is just like you see it now uh, I did that video where I had to put a new voltage regulator on because it uh, had vibrated off while I was using it this tractor believe it or not has a, an hour meter on it which is kind of unusual on a gas tractor but there it does and I can't hardly read what it says I can't get my fat head in there to see but the last numbers are 494 maybe I'll put the camera in here maybe you can read it I'm gonna turn you upside down can you read it then I don't know I would say that the tractor had a loader on it you can tell from the way that the dirt has settled where there must have been brackets uh, he put a block heater on it it looks like actually a hose heater but he must have cared about it or used it in the winter or something one thing I did is it had a uh, aftermarket's power steering you know where they saw the shaft and put it in here and I did not like that the look of it I thought I just wanted it back to the way it was so I put a, a uh, straight shaft back on it and put all new u-joints in it and uh, this is actually the steering shaft off that other super 88 that's in pieces I thought might as well get some use out of it too but this has been a good tractor I haven't even put spark plug wires on it or anything I mean I need to do some rewiring because as we found in that generator video the wiring's kind of sketchy but it's a nice original tractor to a point people keep telling me don't paint it I kind of agree but it does have its share of places that are not right it looks like they heated this with a torch or something maybe to get that to free up I don't know this side is really nice but if you go around the other side is a lot more rusty so I don't know I don't know if it's worth keeping this way or if it's worth painting I like them with paint on them but I hate to destroy something that you can't get back so I'm on the fence you know you look at it from a distance but when you get up close you can see that the grills have been repainted so it's not as original as it appears at first first glance but it's still a very nice tractor and runs excellent I did put a new muffler on here and uh, I think the other one was bent or something but otherwise like I said it's it's very close to like it was when I got it a lot of the stuff I did was just purely because I like them that way or maybe cosmetic I did not rebuild the seat but I need to give it some attention because the guy that had it before me put new rivers in it but he put them in upside down so I need to get that taken care of because when I sit on it I'm heavy enough that this will smack the toolbox lid I guess another project that needs to be done is it's got cracks in the floor pan like most of the 88s do and normally I'd just take this off and weld it up but it looks like they also decided at one point to cut them so that they didn't have to try to fish that front piece out when they were doing something in the rear end and so I would just as soon at this point find another top and not worry about trying to weld that back together but I may not find one I don't know I'm sure there's some out there that I could acquire if I just take the time to to do it this one even has the original gauges in it and I would say at least two of them are original if not all three and if they've been replaced it was replaced with original parts from the dealer uh, I will have to be putting a temperature gauge in it though because it's not connected and that's kind of important I really you need to know what's going on because you can save a an engine if you're watching what you're doing so that needs to be done he even put another sediment bowl in before the carburetor so I don't know it's a nice old tractor and completes my lineup of supers
So I haven't been showing all the tractors I have in my equipment tour. Some of the stuff of other brands I don't necessarily think is of that much interest, but this is an E4 co-op and I put a different motor in it out of a Gleaner combine, which it's the same motor basically. There's just a few differences. And I never got it to run and then I went on to doing other things. So this is another thing that I need to put away again or start tinkering on or something because it's not doing any good just sitting here. I've moved it several times over the last year to mow around it. So anyway, it's another project that hopefully I'll get to. I always liked the, the way these tractors looked all painted up. I thought they were a different shade of orange, you know. So I don't know if we'll get it going again, but it's here. I probably have half a dozen cockshuts and co-ops. Uh, I don't think I'll include them in the tour because they're all pretty well in pieces. But anyway, here's a non-Oliver. If you guys, anybody's watching that is into these, here's one for you. Well, there you have it. My collection of four super tractors, all 1955 model year. And two of them were brought back from near extinction. Uh, they were, you know, totally garbage. So... And the Super 77 probably wouldn't have been far from that. So anyway, I like to buy tractors that need some love, and here's four more of them. Next time we'll take a look at some three-digit tractors. As always, if you haven't uh, already subscribed, go ahead and do that so you don't miss the next installment. And hit the thumbs up and like the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.